friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm doing a full review tutorial, gonna show you pretty much everything in the Wet n Wild Gothographic collection. It won't even fit in the frame. I'm sure you've seen it all over the internet. You've probably already even seen some reviews already, so thank you for checking mine out anyways. I saw that this was gonna launch and I thought it was gonna be such a great collection. And I do love a lot of it, but I also really hate some of it. I'm just gonna kind of go over each individual thing, what I like, what I don't like. I'm gonna have little inserts of me using the products and we're gonna talk about it. The first thing that I used was the Wet n Wild Highlighting Stick. This is in the shade Hell O Darkness. It's super cute. It's very iridescent. It just goes on looking like pure, subtle unicorn goodness. I like this and I don't like this. You just have to be very careful if you try to apply it over powder for one, it's not gonna work because it's a cream. You want to apply creams with creams and powders with powders. And if you're not careful even without powder on it and only foundation you can easily move your foundation around I find what's easiest is honestly just to dip my finger onto the stick and tap it on like that rather than putting it straight on my skin I don't think the stick is a must-have but I also don't think it's awful next I have the two pressed highlighting powders this is the shade white raven and purple ashes I really enjoyed these I did White Raven originally on this side of my face and Purple Ashes on the other side. And then I ended up putting White Raven on top of Purple Ashes just so it balanced out. I only applied the stick to the one side of my face so it wouldn't totally screw up everything. And then obviously I put White Raven over the stick and then Purple Ashes is all by itself. But I will, when you see my eyes, I will be using White Raven in my inner corner so you can see it without anything underneath. But these are really pretty. I was impressed with these. They're not as insanely blinding as I thought they might be, but that's not a bad thing. They go on really smooth. They don't look chunky. And I just really, like the shades. I think they translate beautifully on the skin. Even this purple ashes one I was worried would look too dark and muddy on my skin but it actually once it's applied and blended out looks really soft and pretty and glowy. I don't think these are crazy must-haves unless you just don't have enough duochrome highlighters in your life which I love duochrome so nothing against that. Next is the loose highlighting powder in Moon Tears. I am ub obsessed with this. As you see, I applied it to my nose, my cupid's bow, my chin, and then I even applied it on top of the highlights already on my cheeks. I think this is stunning. I would show you the sifter, but it's already filled with product. It looks like a skull. That's what the sifter is shaped as, and I just think that's such a cute touch. I love this. This is something you have to have. I think this is my favorite thing in the whole collection. If you need anything from this collection, it's that powder. And even though it is a loose powder, I feel like it's not that messy. You pick a little bit off your brush, tap off the excess, and you're good to go. There's no crazy fallout or mess at all. Let's move on to the eyes, shall we? So they came out with these four liquid eyeshadows and I was pretty impressed with these. I've used these a few times now. I didn't use Pure Intention on my eyes today, but I have used this off camera already. I've tried pretty much all of this off camera already just to get a really good thorough review for you. It's really pretty. It's just a very soft sparkle. It's not too crazy, but it's just a really nice soft sparkle on your lids. I think it's cute. The first one I used on my lids was Mystic Dreamer and honestly, it's very soft similar to Pure Intention in the fact that you don't get much payoff other than some sparkle and swatch. They look almost identical, but on the eyes, this one does pull a little bit more pink. You could probably pick just one and be just fine. I don't think you need both. Next to that, I placed Goth Tears, and I love this shade. I think it's so cute. It literally looks like just the most pretty, iridescent, sparkly, shiny color. And then, just to pop it on my lower lash line, just to use it, I threw on Nyctophilia, and it's just like a really pretty navy color. It's a little streakier than the other ones, but it's not something you can't work with. I think these are beautiful. They're not my favorite liquid eyeshadow I've ever used. If you're in the market for liquid eyeshadows and you're able to splurge, I highly recommend the Stila Glitter and Glow or Shimmer and Glow liquid eyeshadows, but for like four or five bucks, these are not bad at all. As far as the liners, I heard not really great things about these. I heard that they were super sheer and patchy and didn't go on great, but I had no problem with these. I've used this one as a whole winged liner one day. I've used this one before off camera and then today obviously you see I kind of ombre the three together. I don't think they're bad at all. They dry down really nice. I feel like they apply very smooth. Granted they're not the most vivid in your face colors ever. They're supposed to be a little more pearlescent-esque but even for that I don't think that they're streaky or weird. I think they apply beautifully. When they dry down they're not moving like they almost feel kind of hard and tight but not in a bad way. Not in a way that irritates my eyes or anything. I'm really happy with all 
of these. I'm sure I will reach for them on occasion, maybe not every day, but I'm sure I will reach for them. I like the formula. The colors are cute. The purple is Black Butterfly. The pink is Pink Coffin. And the white is Skull Prayer. I don't even know if I have a favorite, honestly. I just think they're all so cute. I'm probably more likely to reach for Skull Prayer just because white goes with more things than these two will, but I, I just love them all. And last, we have the four liquid lipsticks. I'm gonna quickly just let you watch me swatch them really quick and then we'll come back and I will tell you my thoughts because I have a lot of thoughts on these. one by one. First, I showed you Wicked Pink. These are very sheer, very streaky. They're not very comfortable, I'll be honest with you. Wicked Pink is probably the cutest, most wearable one, just because, I mean, it's a nudie pink, and I feel like the streakiness doesn't really show that much because it's going to kind of match your natural lip color. It might be a cute lip topper. I feel like all of these might be cute lip toppers, so they sh probably should have been advertised more as a lip topper. Next, we had Gunmetal Heart, and I really liked the idea behind this, I liked this gray and it has these really, really cute pink glitters in it. I think it's so pretty. But again, very streaky, very sheer. Both of these I applied about two coats. They were okay. But I don't know. I'll get to my, my final thoughts in a second. Pastel Grunge was my least favorite. This was the biggest struggle. It took me forever to apply it. It was just so streaky. I'm pretty sure I applied like three layers of this and then it finally got looking somewhat decent. And I mean, they're cute once they're on and they're there, but... It feels like you just have so much on your lips because you do. You have to apply like two or three layers and it's ridiculous. And then last is the one I'm wearing right now, Death to Unicorns, which is a cute name. But again, this one I had to apply like two or three layers and I was getting so frustrated by the end of it. I didn't even want to wear this one anymore. I don't even want to wear it right now. It just feels like I have so much stuck to my lips. I don't think these are going to wear well. I'll be honest, I haven't worn these outside of this video yet, so I don't know the wear time. I have used their other catsuit liquid lips in the past and they were fine. They weren't bad. They weren't my favorite, but they're not bad at all. These are bad. I still feel like up here, up close, you can still kind of see my lip peeking through the three layers of it, and that's just crazy. My lips hurt so bad swatching those. Like, I just swatched 12 liquid lipsticks from Jeffree Star a few days ago. This is worse. This feels so much worse. Those I definitely do not recommend. Don't get those. You can live your life without them, and you will be totally fine. Those I regret having in my life. I regret putting them on my lips everything. But as far as my final thoughts go, I'm pretty happy with the collection as a whole. The liquid eyeshadows were cool. The liquid liners are cool. I really like that loose highlighting powder. And then the other highlighters are cool, even if they aren't my favorite. They were still cute. So what are your thoughts now that I've showed this to you? Do you already have it? Were you planning on getting it? Tell me your thoughts. What did you like? What did you dislike? I guess I haven't really done a video like this where I've tried products out for a few days and then given you a more in-depth review with little tutorial snippets in it. If you like that, please give me a thumbs up and I'll know to keep making more of those. Please hop over to my Instagram if you're not already following me. It's Butte Bean. I post every single day. Don't forget to subscribe here before you leave. I post every three days. Let me know what videos you want to see in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye. I don't want to put another one on. Why do brands keep thinking it's okay to launch products that have an iridescent finish and calling it holographic? It's not holographic. This is holographic. When it reflects and the different rainbow colors shine through, this is not. If it just has like a duochrome or a pinky purpley iridescent feel, that's iridescent, not holographic. Why is that so hard to understand? I get that holographic is trending right now, but stop calling things holographic when they're not. Okay, I'm done. I'm done.